In this tips and tricks video, we're going to take a look at modifying an imported 3D relief or 3D object that you've brought into Carveco Maker. Here you can see that I've imported this flag and the only problem with this is that it's got this pole connected to it and I don't really want that. So if I take a plan view of that, I'm going to show you how you can separate the pole from the flag and then you can use the flag for a separate design or project if you like. So it's quite easy to do. All that you need to do is draw a vector around either the flag or the pole. In this instance, I'm going to just draw it around the pole. Now, obviously you could do this really, really well. If you zoom in, let's just go in between there. And then go in between there. Now I've picked something that's quite easy to create a vector around. If you wanted to do this around something quite complicated, just spend a little bit of time getting that vector right. Now I'm not bothered about round here because it's just in fresh air anyway. So if I now right click to close the polyline, you can see that that goes all around the outside of that pole. Now what I need to do is basically flatten all of this or do something that we call zero. If I come up to here, zero inside vector, this will remove that pole because it's going to remove everything inside the vector. If I selected zero outside of the vector, then what that would do, it would keep the pole and remove the flag. Now I can export that out as a triangle mesh. So save it out as an STL file, and then you can import that back into your project at a later date. Now, what if you wanted to do this on something a little bit more complicated? Here, I've got this emblem and I really want this image this griffin or whatever it is, I really want that and I'd like to separate it from the shield design. Now this one's quite hard. The reason being, if I rotate around, you can't quite make it out, but this is all on an oval sort of domed surface, so it's not flat. So if it was flat, it would be really easy to do. I could just get the height of it, if I zoom in here, just get the height of that. If you look down the bottom right hand corner, you can see the Z value is 0.43862. So I could just use that to get a height range and create a boundary. Now the problem that I've got is if I move this mouse now, watch that Z range change. So as I'm moving it, this is changing and it's only changing a few fair really. So a good thing to do here, because what I'm going to do is pretty much try to guess the height where I can create a boundary around this. So a good tip is to basically exaggerate the height of this so you can get a pretty good boundary around this relief. So what I'm going to do is rotate around and I'm going to scale the relief and I'm going to make this ridiculously high. Let's say like so. And then select apply and cancel that. Now if you take a look at this you can see it looks absolutely stupid at the moment. But if I take a view from the top I've still got that image. And also by these lighter colors here, you can also see that it is on this dome and you can see where the high spots are. So if I zoom in here and then hover the mouse over here, I can see that it's around about 
And you can still see that it's still moving by a few feet as I hover over here. So I need to try to get the high spot. Now I'm not going to get this perfect, I'll be completely honest with you. What you're going to, going to have to do is do this so it comes inside the actual image. But it will still look quite good. What I need to do is go to the vector drop down and create relief boundary. And then what I need to do is select use height range. And then all that I'm concerned with is this minimum height. So if I zoom in again, because I can't remember what it was. And you need to get sort of the highest height. So let's start off with 8.855. and then create boundary and it will create a boundary for you around that and you can see that it, it looks okay there are certain parts where it's not giving me the correct data that I want so here you can see it's not following this it's not following around there I need to do it a little bit higher now this is a little bit trial and error to be completely honest with you so let's undo that and then let's hover over where that part was. So let's just go up, let, literally just a fair create a vector. And you can see that it, it hasn't created the vector there now. It has created a nice vector around there and it's just a fair. And you can see here it's done the same thing. So literally just that fair made all the difference. So I'm quite happy with that, to be honest with you. So what I'm going to do is close that. And then I'm going to deselect a couple of these vectors. At the top, you can see what it's done. The, the top of this shield, it's at the same height as what I've told it to do. So I need to deselect that because it will keep that. So let's deselect that and the same with the bottom here let's deselect that and then i've got this rogue vector here i'm going to deselect that now you can see that it's not following this bit of the relief here as i said it's not going to be perfect but i'm not too fussed about that i'm going to just leave it as it is so when you've done that what you need to do is I need to zero outside of the vector this time because I want to remove everything that's outside of this vector. So if I hold the left mouse button down and then come to zero outside vector and then that will remove everything outside the vector. And then I can just delete all of these vectors. Now if I rotate around you'll see that I've still got this ridiculous height. So what I need to do is bring that back down and it still maintains the detail that it had originally. So if I click scale relief and then I drop that down, maybe to about there, apply and cancel. And if you take a look at that, you can see that it's given me my relief. Now it might give you some corners that are a little bit sharp what you can do there is just smooth that down. So smooth the relief and then just add the strength and it would just smooth that down. And again, you can export this out as an STL and then use it at a future date in one of your designs. So that's how you modify imported 3D files within Carve Code Maker.